Hello and welcome to another lesson on soundproofing. Welcome everybody. Sorry, I have a cold today. I got I got COVID again. Ugh, it's been the worst. The worst is the brain fog. That's what I'm noticing. But all that aside, today we're going to be talking about does my studio soundproof drums? And this is a great question. I mean, drums are, they're like the loudest instrument. I mean, you can crank a guitar amp really, really loud. You can crank a bass amp really, really loud. Uh, but drum sets in general, you know, you're hitting, I think I hit 107 decibels peak when I was playing in here. You'll see that in a second. Um, so in this video, what I'm going to do is try to be somewhat scientific here. I have Decibel X, which is a app on your phone that you can download. That's an SPL meter, but it's really cool because it allows you to video through the app and show the decibel meter as you're videoing. Uh, so this gives you guys proof of what's going on in and around my studio. So what I did here is I, I took a video. Uh, uh, directly behind the walls, like literally inches from the wall outside of the studio to show you how soundproof it is. And then in front of the door and 20 feet from the door and give you some idea of just how much sound gets out of my studio to say is, does my studio soundproof drums? That's really the question. Someone asked that on YouTube comments or whatever. And I was like, hell yeah, man, let's figure that out. Like, does it really help with drums? Let me show you guys that. So before we jump in, if you're going down this, this, uh, path of building a soundproof home recording studio or soundproof room or any room that you just don't want sound coming in or out, check out my free soundproofing workshop. It, it really gives away all the goods. It's, uh, it, it just goes in depth through exactly what I would do, helps you understand a lot of the concepts and, and putting the whole system together rather than watching a million of these type of videos. Uh, so to watch that right away, just go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, let's jump into the video. Enough blabbering with COVID brain, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> All right, first off, let's watch a video from Decibel X, which by the way, I recommend this app. It's pretty cool. Uh, I paid $2 so that I could do longer video for a week, but hey, you know, it's worth it. It's awesome. So first we're just gonna hear the ambient decibel level in my room, in my studio with nothing, just so you get like a baseline audio. So let's listen to that right now. All right, now that we've heard that, you know, it's very quiet in here. Usually it is under 30 dB, usually around that 25 dB range. I even had my mini split not on silent mode, so it could be even quieter if I had done that. Uh, but the mini split's great. Mitsubishi all the way. Love it. Um, now let's listen to me playing drums in the room, and you're going to notice a big difference. You might want to turn the volume down for those of you guys who, you know, I'll try to make it so it doesn't spike a lot, but, you know, going from very quiet 25 dB to 107 dB, even on a cell phone, can jar the ears. So here we go. This is me playing drums in the studio, and then the meter is like, I don't know, five feet away or so. All right, so it was loud. And, uh, you know, I've been playing drums for about eight months here, so, you know, give me some grace. Uh, I'm trying to get better at it, get my time really locked in. Now I'm gonna do a reading from the back corner about eight feet from the studio. Now this side of the studio has two windows up high, uh, but mostly there's no door, and it's, and it's directly behind the drum set. So this is going to be, you know, what, Really, no one would hear it unless they're in the yard, like your neighbors are still farther away. But let's just listen to this one. All right, this is from the back corner, directly behind where the drum set is. Let's see how this sounds. All right, cool. Not bad, right? That's pretty good. Um, now, let's listen. I was curious. Let's. I just put, decided. Let's put the the phone, the SPL meter, right eight inches from the wall, directly behind the drum set. 
on the back wall of my studio. So the wall, this is the wall right behind me here. My door's behind the camera over here. So this is like the most soundproof wall because it has no windows uh, and no door. And there's really no penetrations in this wall really whatsoever. So it's a, it's a good solid wall. And this will give you a sense of like, okay, what can a double wall system? I did have green glue between my two layers of drywall. So that's a factor here too. Uh, what does this do? Um, so let's listen to that video. All right, I'm gonna place it now. I literally couldn't even hear it in that last video, which is crazy. This is gonna be directly behind the drum set. Um, just so you can see, you know, neighbor's house is right there. The rental house is right there. So we don't want people to hear anything. I'm gonna put this right up against the wall. Let's see how this goes. Okay, now you're probably wondering, what about the door? The door is always the weakest point. My studio, the door, annoyingly so, is still the weakest point. Uh, I've spent over $3,000 fixing and muddling with my door over the years, and uh, it's still not where I want it to be, but it also is fine. Like, I'm obsessed because I'm the soundproofing guy on YouTube, but for you and average people, it would be fine. Like no one cares. Um, so this is going to be five feet from the door and you'll notice a difference. Like it's still, you'll hear the drums a little bit more. Well, whatever. I'm not going to talk about it. Let's just jump right in. Listen to this video. Okay, so like, you can kind of hear the drums, but it's like that tick, 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 tick. Um, my, I have tenants now in my house, and and one of my renters came out. He's like, yeah, I heard you playing the drums the other day, but I was like, it was so faint. And he's like, and, and I was like, oh, can you hear it in the house? He's like, no, not at all. So I'm like, okay, great, success. You know, that's awesome. Um, this is 20 feet from the front door, directly facing that front door. So let's hear that. This is about 20 feet from the front door in the back of my house in the driveway. So, let's see what this sounds like. Not bad, right? Not bad. Cool. So let's answer this question. Does my studio soundproof drums? Yes. Huh? Yeah, definitely, man. Like, unless I, okay, here, uh, so my, my tenants said they don't, the noise doesn't bother them at all. They can't hear it in the house. My neighbors behind me, uh, one time I talked to them, I said, Hey, yeah. Did you know I have a recording studio back there? They're like, we had no idea. And I play drums, I'm like mixing, I'm like turning it up loud, I'm hitting the guitar amp. They had no idea I even make music. So, success, right? Success of the studio. Now, if you were directly in front of my door and you needed that to be dead quiet, you might be like, oh, Wilson, oh, it doesn't quite work in front of the door. But hey, 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 hold, hold, hold on. Hold on the YouTube comments for a second here. Hold, whoa, whoa, whoa. The thing is, 
Let me tell you how I could have done my studio better. Remember, this is my first studio build. I've built and designed over 20 studios now. And every time I'm thinking through it, it's getting better and better and better. So let me tell you what I would have done differently. If you guys are like, I don't want to hear a single freaking snare hit from that drum set. I think you could do it. I think we could build a studio where you just don't even know you're playing drums at all. And this is what I would have done differently. First, no windows, no natural light. Yeah, it sucks, but hey, it's, I think my windows do a great job of soundproofing and I honestly think they're way stronger than the door. But you know, if you're gonna build the, the drum cave that you really need, no windows, take those out. For the door, double door all the way, you know, I would make them super heavy, so each door would uh, would be matched my drywall, which I'll talk about in a second, but essentially I would do four layers of drywall. And I'm doing this with a client of mine right now who's a metal drummer, and we're building a soundproof drum cave shed in his backyard, so this is a great example. And I'm making his doors about 150 pounds per door, two doors, super awesome seals. It's going to be great. You're not going to hear anything. And uh, that's what I would do differently. Even better, if you had more money and more space, is do like an airlock vestibule. So have one door that opens this way, turns, make a little soundproof room, and then you have another door that opens like an L so the doors don't face each other. That'll be even better if you can do it. It's more money, but it's, it's well worth it if you're trying to just not hear drums at all. I would also not put any holes in the wall. I have so many holes in my studio wall. It's just like I just kept on being like... And like... Yeah, it's fine. It didn't make a huge difference. They put the new mini split in. They drilled a freaking like three inch hole through the wall directly all the way through. And honestly, it didn't kill the soundproofing that much. So that's great. But if you're going to do it right, don't do that. Don't put holes. Get rid of the putty pads. Uh, surface mount all your electrical or even better yet, build an acoustic wall and put the electrical in the acoustic wall, which is not part of the isolation wall. You can put as many holes as you want in your acoustic wall. It's, it's all good. And then I would also do my ducted mini split system. So I'd have an HVAC system that only went through ducts. There's no actual head unit in the studio. And then I can control the soundproofing of the duct system much more easily than if I just plop a hole right through my wall and don't soundproof around it at all. So that's what I would do differently as well with the holes in the wall. Like I said before, I would do four layers of drywall. If I'm a drummer and I'm trying to soundproof, like, yeah, I mean, you can use green glue. You can do two layers of five eighths uh, drywall with green glue. I'm sure it won't hurt. You can do mass loaded vinyl in there. I'm not a huge fan of it because it's expensive. Not a huge fan of green glue because it's expensive. Uh, but you know what's cheaper? Drywall. Drywall is cheap. That's why we use it. And five eighths inch drywall, four layers of it, it's a lot of mass. So like that would be great. And, you know, that's probably what I would do. That's what I am doing for my client right now who wants a super insanely uh, soundproof metal drum room. He's a metal player. Um, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to go all the way. We're doing four layers of drywall. We're doing four layers of OSB on the outside sheathing. Um, and then we're doing OSB sheathing on the outside of the ceiling. And we're doing a separate system. And all the things I talked about in this video I'm doing in his studio. And I'll tell you when it's done, how it worked. Um... But that's what we're, I'm learning. I'm learning how to do this better. This was my first studio. It's not perfect. Lastly, if I did it all over again, I would 100% build an acoustic wall. If you haven't already watched my video about Philip Newell's design, this video pissed a lot of people off, which I love because it's kind of like throwing a wrench in the internet of acoustics and people don't like it. But, you know, you can build acoustic walls that are not just insulation and fabric, which has no mass and you know, doesn't really stop low frequencies because of the quarter wavelength rule. So, you know, watch that video and you'll learn that you can build an acoustic wall that helps with absorption of lower frequencies by using mass loaded vinyl and drywall and creating a diaphragmatic closed system in the acoustic wall that's about two to four inches off your existing isolation wall. And that will not only help with uh, the absorption of low frequencies, but in essence, because you're absorbing low frequencies through that wall, you're also helping with isolation. So they're, they're interconnected and separate at the same time, which is a paradox, which is also why people go nuts, um, because the, the paradox is confusing. But the more you do this, you realize, oh no, it's a beautiful paradox because isolation always is helping with absorption and we need to think of them as separate because absorption alone is not enough, uh, to isolate. So there you go. But anyways, this is, I hope this was a helpful video. I hope it, it taught you something. It gave you some real world examples of what you can do 
Uh, don't be afraid. Like if you do what I tell you to do in these, in these situations, even if you make as many mistakes as I did, which I'm looking back, I'm like, I made a lot of mistakes, uh, on my first studio, but it still worked. It still worked. You know, there's, there is some grace. Um, a lot of people like to try to scare you like, Oh, if you put one nail and it connects your two walls, it'll never work. It's like, no, it doesn't quite work like that. Um, so it's, it's, layers and layers of doing the right thing over and over and over again that leads to a system that works really well. Um, the more mistakes you make in the, mis- the system, yeah, the less efficient it'll be at sound isolation. All right, enough blabbering. If you like what I'm doing, if you like my style, uh, check out the workshop. I, I dare you, check it out. It, it is helpful stuff. It's good stuff. I made it even a couple years ago, but I think it's still very relevant and it has a lot of good information in it. Uh, maybe one day I'll update it with all my new ideas. But basically, go to soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That's soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. And you can listen right away. 45 minutes of in-depth teaching all my good stuff. Just giving away full frizzle for free for you. All right. Enough of this. I hope I feel better next week. I feel like I'm in a COVID delirium. I'll talk to you guys all later. Uh, Thanks so much for watching, subscribing, sharing the love. Ask me questions. I try to answer them when I can. And uh, best of luck out there.